just wanted to get on here and just chit chat with you. Um, <laughs> chit chat support me. <laughs> um, talk about things that, um, let me get that little, you know, this is just, how come when other girls do videos, you don't see a big light in their glasses? I don't understand. Okay. Anyways, um, I wanted to chit chat because, you know, just life in general can get so lonely and hard and it just seems like when you're isolated in your own four walls um, and you're scrolling on the internet, it just, it can get very just terrible as far as for your mental health. So I was like, I'm going to make a video to let people know you are not alone in the way you feel. Um, and I want to put something on the internet that is healthy and that is positive and not just like, oh, you know, look at me, look at my beautiful house, look at my this, you know, look at my achievements. Instead of just putting like, a highlight reel of everything just wonderful in life I would love to create a space that shows just the realness of life you know and I've always wanted to do things like this but I always get scared of what people will think because I mean I don't know how to do my makeup for one let's just point out the obvious here I've been newly trying to learn how to do eyebrows and such, and well, it is what it is. I do not have on eyeliner, just want you to know, this is from my mascara, and I'm also not crying. This is just what happens when I try to do mascara, because, look at that, it just kind of, eh, gets everywhere. Um, that's when I put my mascara on this morning, I didn't do it right. Okay, so anyway... I am not a someone that you need to come hang out with if you're all about, you know, style and fashion and makeup and all that. That You're not going to get that here. <laughs> that ain't what this space is for. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that stuff. It's just that's not what this is about. This is more about let's chit chat about real life things um, and not talk about our home or our makeup or what we wore today but let's talk about things that are a little bit deeper than that that we're not getting on Instagram because we're already getting all the other stuff on Instagram and that's great and Pinterest so if you need all that stuff that's where you can go but for here I just want this to be like if you're going through some crap and you're feeling some type of way you come chit chat with Courtney <laughs> <laughs> who knows maybe I'll just make you feel better about yourself um but anyway so today I just wanted to uh read to you a little devotion and it's not like some long devotion it is literally hold on like two paragraphs um but I have this amazing bible uh which this is kind of okay so Another thing is, I don't know if I have ADHD or not, but I'm kind of all over the place. So, this Bible has a, is really cool. First of all, it's the Word of God. That was cool. Um, probably the coolest thing we could ever see or read. But the cool thing about this Bible is, I bought this Bible a few months before my dad died. Um, and it wasn't like I knew my dad was going to die. He just died unexpectedly. But this Bible is filled with devotions from God to his daughters. So like every devotion is um, it's supposed to feel like God's talking to you as a as he as, bleh, as you are his daughter. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? So like in a normal devotion, you know it you feel like God's talking to you, um, but you don't specifically feel like it's like dad and I'm daughter. So normal devotions might be for anyone, you know, but this is focused on um, talking to his daughters. I don't know if I'm making sense, so I'm just going to read the devotion and you'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, the cool thing about that was 
I really needed that right after my dad died. And I, so I naturally, I got into my Bible after my dad died because I was needing to be closer to God. And it was just really one of those moments where you're like, wow, God, even though we might go through some suffering, he really does just make sure that you're taken care of even before the suffering begins. Like I had no idea that I was going to need a Bible that would not only make me feel closer to God, but to my earthly dad that's now, you know, gone. And so now when I was running to the Bible to get comfort from God, not only did he give me that, but he was giving me love letters from him to me in the form of um, like everyone starts with beloved daughter. And I needed to hear that when I lost my dad. Um, so it it's just amazing to me. I don't know if that made sense, but it's just amazing to me how God, no matter what is going to happen in your life tomorrow or the next day or five years from now, he will make sure that you have everything you need to be able to sustain that suffering. Um, and I just want you to know that, that just because we go through times of suffering does not mean that God is not good or that he's not with us because we can really get trapped in that mindset of, you know, if God is so good, then why is this happening to me? Or if God is real, why does he allow X, Y, Z to happen? Um, you know, there's no question that you can't take to God, that you can't take to the cross, but you just don't want to go into that dark hole of why me? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? And I have gone through that. I have shaken my fist at the sky. I have done all of that. And, and to be honest with you, something that I have come to learn is there's just some things that I'm not going to have an answer for on this side of heaven. Sorry, it's real life. <laughs> See, it feels like we're really talking right here on my couch. It's like you're right there. Because if you were right here, that would have really just happened in real life. I would have yawned. I wouldn't have been able to pause it or edit that out. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I forgot what I was saying. But but yeah, it doesn't matter. The The thing for me that's been hard with some things that's happened to me in my life is trying to understand <sighs> chit chats with Courtney getting real up and honest here. <laughs> um, wow. I don't know why I keep yawning. I'm boring myself. I hope I'm not boring you. No, but the part that has been hard in my life as far as my walk with God is trying to reason with things that have happened in my life, trying to figure out the why behind it, trying to figure out the purpose for it, and then just downright getting angry about it and trying to figure out, well, I was doing everything that I thought you wanted me to do, Lord, and then you go and do this to me? Like, why am I being punished when I've done everything Good light. Woo! When I've done everything that you have asked of me. And I think that that's pretty normal as a human for us to feel. But the thing that I've had to learn is it's not about me all the time. You know, like, yeah, I might be going through some stuff. But that doesn't mean that God is not faithful or he is not a God that would um, be for my good. Um, he didn't promise anywhere in this Bible that we were going to have, you know, an easy life. Um, he didn't promise that just because we are saved means that we are free of all suffering. We live in a fallen world and we are going to suffer while we're here, but that doesn't mean that he isn't going to make a way for us and, um, sustain us within that suffering it doesn't mean that he can't use that suffering for his own glory um, and for our good um 
So if you're wondering today why he's allowing something to happen to you, I do not have an answer for you for that. I wish that I did because I wish I knew why I've had to endure some things that I've had to endure. Um, I don't, I don't know, but what I do know is God is good and God is for you and he will give you every, he will equip you with what you need to get through this time of suffering. Like I said, this, he cares about every detail of your life. So he cares so, so much about oh, the littlest things like, um, like this Bible. I mean, I don't know if that's resonating with you, but my dad had just died and here I was pulling out my Bible wanting hope and wanting strength and just wanting some peace about all of it. And the Bible that I had just bought is filled with love letters to his daughter. And so the intimacy that he longs to have with us is amazing. And we push him away so much. And, um, if you are feeling far from God, I just want to encourage you to get into the Word of God, to find a Bible that you can, you know, understand. I know that people have things to say about all the different types of Bibles, but what I would say to you is any of the versions are fine when you're starting out trying to learn about God and build that relationship with God. The Holy Spirit will give you what you need from the word of God. Because believe me, if you are picking up a Bible, as long as it is the, as long as it is the Holy Bible, if you're picking up the Bible, God is going to give you what you need from that Bible. Um, I don't know what the best version is. I don't know, you know, how far off certain versions are from the others, but, but I do know that God can give you what you need from each Bible. Um, so, I just want to encourage you that if you're trying to, if you're in a spot where you're in a time of suffering or anything like that, just download the Bible app or go buy a Bible, Google the different translations, the message version. I love it speaks more in like 2020 language. And again, some people might say, you know, that things get lost in the translation. But what I would say to you is if you are going to actually read the, a Bible you can understand versus not reading one at all because you don't understand the other ones, I would say go pick up the Bible that you're actually going to read. So like if you Google the message Bible, it is legit like how I would talk to you. It's It breaks it down in our, the way we talk now. And so I love that Bible. Um, but anyway, I'm all over the place and... Hi, tutors. Toots. <laughs> and so I'm going to get to the devotion. So the name of this devotion is Never Alone in Suffering. Which happens to be kind of what I've been talking about, I hope. Um, and so the Bible verse is Hebrews 2.18. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Hebrews 2.18. Since Christ himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. So if you're anything like me, you got to read it twice to get it. So I'm going to read it again. Since Christ himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. So basically, since, since uh, Jesus, when he was here, went through suffering, he is able to help us. Um, when we are going through suffering or when we are being tested. And here's our love letter from God. And this is my favorite part of this Bible. So it says, Beloved daughter, I am with you through every tear and every trial. When you hurt, I hurt. There's nothing you'll walk through that I will not walk through with you. You're not alone in this world. Look to me with every difficult emotion you feel and I will bring relief and comfort. I am the father of compassion, and when your heart breaks, mine does too. 
I know you're hurting. That's why I sent my only son to suffer for you so that you would have the power to overcome and be healed. When you suffer, do not run away from me. Run to me and I will hold you forever. Love your heavenly father. So I want to read that last part again because I really want that to hit home. So I am the father of compassion. When your heart breaks, mine does too. I know you are hurting. That is why I sent my only son to suffer for you so that you would have the power to overcome and be healed. So point A. He is a father of compassion and he loves you. And when your heart is breaking and when you're on the floor and you're buried in the tears and you can't even breathe because you're crying so bad. He is right there and his heart is breaking too. And he knows that you are hurting right now. And that is why he sent his only son to suffer so that you would have the power to overcome and be healed. And I want you to understand that God is not here, you know, just playing puppets with us and just watching us suffer and not doing anything about it. He is working behind the scenes and we just cannot see it, but we have to believe it. And we have to know and believe that he is working things out for our good behind the scenes. And we will eventually see it, even if we can't see it right now. And even if we do not feel it, because I will be very honest with you. When I got a phone call that my dad was in the hospital and then I showed up at the hospital just to be told that he didn't make it and I didn't even get to tell my dad bye, I'm going to be really honest with you right now. I did not understand why God was doing that to me. I did not feel like God was working things out for me. Um, and I did not, in that moment, I did not want to hear anything about God because I couldn't understand why he would do that and maybe you feel that way right now about something going on in your life but I just want to remind you and if I could hold your hand if you were sitting right here in the middle of me and this dog and I could give you a hug I would hold you and I would give you the biggest hug and I would just say that God loves you so much and he knows that you're hurting and he hurts for you and he hurts with you. And we don't understand why things happen the way that they do. We don't understand why things don't go our way. We don't understand why the dreams and the hopes that we so desire are not happening for us. But I want you to know that Jesus is there. And he sees all of your tears and he knows your disappointments and he is working it out and he does have a purpose. He will make a purpose and we just have to believe that right now he's working it all out. He's working it all out. Even though the reports that we're getting or the things that we're seeing don't show us that, we know that he is doing that and that we just have to believe that. And I know that's hard and I know that sounds cliche, but I just want you to, you to know that it's true and it's true because that's, that's what the word of God says. And if you can just think back in your life to all the times that he was faithful, there's no reason that he will not be faithful now too. And this is all part of our testimony and we have to know that, that he will make a way for whatever it is that you're going through. So he says, that's why I, I sent my only son to suffer for you so that you would have the power to overcome and be healed. So my other part that I would say to you is, if God didn't care and he was just some terrible God, do we really think that he would send his only son to suffer like he did while he was here? Because I don't think so. Because I have a son and I have a daughter and I can't imagine purposely sending them somewhere that I know they're going to suffer like that. I can't imagine doing that. I don't know that I love anyone enough to put my own child um, through pain like that. So yes, God loves you. Um, and Jesus Christ loves you. And um, 
then it says, when you suffer, don't run away from me. And I want that to hit home because if you're anything like me, you can clam up and get real quiet when you're stressed or as far as with God, or when you're going through a time of pain, or you're just not happy with your life, or you're just kind of given up because you're like, you know what, God, I thought you were telling me to do this, so I did that, and then what I thought was going to happen didn't happen, or you put this hope, or you put this dream in my heart since I was little, but now I'm told it can't happen for me, and you know, so, and when those things happen to me, I kind of clam up. I don't know that I'm not always angry with God, but I just get silent with God and I just don't talk to him anymore. But he's telling us when you suffer, don't run from me, run to me and I will hold you forever. So we need to run to God. We need to run to our Bible. We need to put on our worship music. We need to worship him and we need to get in our Bible. We need to run to him. Even though we are hurting, if we run to him He will hold on to us and he will give us that comfort that we need desperately. And he says, love your heavenly father. So our reflection is, it's amazing that our heavenly father became so personal that he sent his son to suffer the same things that we suffer. And he didn't stop there. He gave his son to us as a gift so we could spend eternity with him. If you're wondering if God sees your suffering, look to the cross and remember that he not only sees it, he feels it and he will help you through it. I don't know why I keep yawning. Um, So again, if you're wondering if he sees you suffering, look to the cross and remember he not only sees you suffering, but he feels you suffering and he's going to help you through it. And then our treasure of truth for today is Jesus is our savior, but he is also our great comforter. So I have no idea what you're going through today. Um, but I just want you to know that you're not alone. Um, there's so many of us, I believe that are out here silently suffering and, you know, I hate that. I hate that we, the thing is when you're suffering, you're usually, you usually end up isolating yourself because people can only listen to you, you know, talk about this thing so many times and then you feel guilty. And so anyway, you just end up suffering in silence and you become very isolated. And so then when we become isolated, we get on our phone and we start going like this. Oh, like, oh, wow. Wow. You know, she has a great life. Why can't that be me? Mm. She's got the perfect life. Perfect life. Oh my gosh, I can't stand her. Like, <laughs> you know, it just goes on and on. And then we end up, we're like, oh my gosh. You know, me, I'm 30 years old. She's freaking 22 years old. And she's already doing that thing that I want to do. Oh my gosh. You know, and it's just like this spiral. And then we get even more isolated and we get more down and then we get farther and farther from God because we're sitting here looking in everybody's window at their very best moments. Who even knows if half the stuff that they're saying is true or, you know, who knows what the rest of their house looks like after they show us this or who really knows, you know, or we're just looking at all these great things that God has done for these other people. And instead of being happy for them and instead of you know using that as fuel to our fire because if he will do it for her sister he will do it for you there's nothing that he will do for her that he will not do for you and so but the devil you know will get in our thoughts and make us believe that we are not worthy enough or we must have to work harder or do more or or whatever and we forget that the only thing we need to do is be still and trust God. Get in the word. Build a relationship with him, which just simply means talking to him. Good morning, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've blessed me with. Forgive me, Jesus, for 
taking it for granted and for being so distant with you. I want to build a relationship with you and I am just going to ta start talking to you about my day to day. I mean, that is all it takes. You don't have to have some rigorous prayer life where it's just like scripted or anything. Just like I'm talking to you right now. I am talking to my phone that cannot talk back. That is literally at first what talking to God is like because at first you don't have a relationship. So it can feel like you're talking to a wall. But the more and more that you pray and build that relationship, pretty soon, you know, you can pray for an hour and it just flies by. Um, because it, it it's no longer just praying. It is actually talking to your father. It's a relationship. Um, which is praying, but it just doesn't feel that way anymore. Now it feels like you're actually having this, you know, this conversation with a friend. Um, anyway... I'm going to go ahead and end this because I don't know where else I'm going with it <laughs> other than to say that um, you are not alone in the way that you feel and it is okay that you feel the way that you feel um, and you're not a bad person because you get on Instagram or Facebook and you start comparing yourself or you start feeling envious. That is all very, very normal. Um, I think we all go through that. And there's nothing wrong with you. And also, um, there's nothing wrong with the fact that you haven't made your, you know, dreams come true yet. Or that God hasn't done that thing that you've been believing for yet. And I would just encourage you to make sure you get in the word and have that relationship with him. Because, like I said, if he will do it for her, he will do it for you. And if he will do it for you, he will do it for me. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. And on and on and on. He loves each of us so, so much. And um, sometimes I, I really think that sometimes he needs us to realize that, that we need to rely on him, not on our own might. And so sometimes the very bottom of the barrel is, is where you're going to um, find Jesus the most. And what I mean by that is at the very lowest point of your life, sometimes that's exactly where he meets you. And that's where you see him the most clearly because it forces you to solely rely on him. You know, like when you can't afford your bills, um, when you are at your rock bottom and you're completely heartbroken and your marriage is over and, you know, the worst of the worst happens, you are forced to solely rely on Jesus because that's really all you have. And I have found in my most desperate hours, that's when I feel him the most um, because he is such a comforter and um, he just loves you so very much. And that's what I want you to know. <laughs> and um, be encouraged this week. And, oh, and I want you to all, I also want to encourage you that if you need a Bible and you liked what this one was like today, there is this Bible. It's called the Thrive Bible. And that's my daughter writing her name at the bottom or attempting to. And that's, this is dirty, but that's okay. Um, because this is life without a filter. There's dirt on my Bible because that's real life. And that means that I actually use it and doesn't just sit in a drawer. Um, but anyway, it's called the Thrive Bible. You can get it on Amazon. You could probably get it other places too. I think it was like $35 or something like that. But it's amazing. Like I said, she's got all kinds of devotions in here that uh, speak to you as if your father's talking to his daughter. Um, and of course, it's got the Bible in there too. Um, but anyway... It's by, it's a journaling devotional Bible for women, Thrive. And see, it's even got spaces to journal off to the side, take notes. You know, like when you're reading your Bible or whatever, you've got room to take notes and all that. So anyway, um, I'm going to get on out of here. Peace.